Hi guys, this is Rudy, uh, Bester Investor, or otherwise Mr. Oxy. In fact, you can call me whatever you'd like. As long as it sounds good, I'll probably respond. And as you know by now, if you uh, respond to my videos in the comments, I try to get back to uh, all of you as soon as I find the time to do so. What we're gonna do today is uh, just a couple of things. Firstly, I'm going to open up subscriptions on my channel, uh, which will be completely optional. Um, in fact, if you don't subscribe, nothing will change whatsoever. But I'll show you in a minute when I go through some of the uh, stocks that uh, you had recommended that I should take a look at, uh, what you can get um, effectively next to nothing for free if, uh, if you do subscribe. The other thing I'm going to do um, is I'm going to work through the list very, very quickly, really, because it's an enormous amount of information. It's almost 40 different uh, uh, investment equities that you guys had proposed that um, I take a look at, so I did. I'm going to I'm going to take a look at those and then I'm going to wrap up the video and show you how I traded my um, oxy warrants. So uh, you might be interested to uh, to sticking with me until the end of the video so that you can see what I did with my oxy warrants. So uh, let's uh, get going. This is what you came for. Uh, this is what you came for. Let's get the show on the road. So um, I asked you uh, a little while ago, um, probably about two weeks ago now, for uh, your uh, stock suggestions in terms of undervalued stocks. I've had a chance to look at most of them. I might have missed one or two. I think I actually got them all. Uh, but what I did was I put it together in a spreadsheet. So in the introduction a minute ago, I said um, I'm going to open up subscriptions on the on the video channel, which are entirely optional. If you do subscribe. I will provide you with information like this, um, basically just uh, you know for for free, if I could put it that way. Uh, you don't need to subscribe to him, anything at all because nothing's going to change if you don't subscribe. Uh, you can just keep watching the videos that I make, and um, if there's something of interest to you, obviously I'd like you to uh, to comment and stay with me as we go. Uh, so what I've done here, guys, is I look pretty much at all those tickers that you had suggested for me. There's actually 38 of them if I exclude the uh, line at the top, which is the header. So you can see right here at the bottom, uh, we are up to 39 rows. Um, but let's uh, go through these very, very briefly. I, you know, Obviously, I'm not going to spend an entire video going through each one of these. And on many of them, I still have to do some extra work. So um, stick with me here for a while. I'm just going to highlight some of them for you. So um, somebody had suggested Marcus Corporation to me. Uh, anything in green on uh, this particular spreadsheet provides me with a sort of quick snapshot of something that I consider to be good in terms of uh, value as of today. So, for instance, I see Marcus is trading at about $12. It's got a 52-week high of about $34. So it's way below 50% of its 52-week high, so that immediately is of interest to me. So. Um, if I go across the headers at the top here, I'm looking at the uh, price sort of, this was as of yesterday, the 52 week low and high, the price earnings if they have one, the market cap of the company, just to give them an indication of its size. You'll notice that some of them are in green. Those are the ones that are in billions. It's not uh, an easy uh, job to build a multi-billion dollar company. So anytime you achieve that, uh, that's of interest anyway, because that's a solid corporation. Do they pay a dividend, yes or no? Uh, a quick view on tip ranks, are they saying buy, hold, or sell? And then there's some financial ratios. Anytime I see something uh, that I don't like, uh, I highlight it in red. So for instance, you can see on Marcus Corporation, which is on the top row, they have an interest coverage of negative 9.22. That's just horrible. Uh, so I don't particularly like uh, that particular uh, uh, ratio in terms of the coverage ratio, and uh, neither do I like the uh, that ratio in collaboration with the um, debt to capital ratio. So they don't have too much debt, but they have uh, a very poor ability to potentially pay it. And you can also see over here, sort of on the far right of the screen, the return on equity, uh, the return on assets, return on investments, uh, the operating margin, the net margin, et cetera, all negative. So um, 
you know, I, I kind of skipped over that one. It's not really attractive to me for a variety of different reasons. The same with Meredith, but maybe for different reasons, especially the fact that Meredith has 87% debt, but at least it has a quick ratio of 1.3 and uh, two times the uh, ability to, uh, to cover the, uh, the interest payments with its operational profit. Tim had suggested Viacom. Viacom is actually a really interesting potential um, uh, investment for me, Tim. So thanks for suggesting that one. The company has a market cap of $21 billion. It's not super cheap right now. It's trading at $34 versus it's $52, uh, $43. But other than that, it does look pretty good. You know, So if I look at it, uh, Tip Rank says it's a moderate buy. Um, and then if I scroll across, I've highlighted almost all these things over here in green. Uh, most of the sort of fundamentals are mostly green for me. So Viacom is potentially interesting to me. A couple of people had suggested GameStop. Uh, GameStop is also one of those um, debt burden companies. It's got uh, a debt to capital ratio of about 60%, which is not too bad, but it's got an interest coverage of negative 8.57 and a quick ratio of only 0 0.52. That needs to be greater than one. Also, not very profitable, the return on, uh, well, in fact, the operating margin, net margin, return on uh, equity, return on assets, return on investments, et cetera, not very good. So I know a few people like GameStop, it's pro probably not a bad company to uh, invest in, we'll have to see how it goes, but uh, not for me. Smith & Wesson, uh, Wesson was uh, suggested by Jake Beverly. Uh, thanks for suggesting that one, uh, Jake. In fact, I'll probably uh, take a whirl on this one and buy myself something in consumer discretionary, which I highlighted here because I don't have anything in consumer discretionary right now. Tip Rank says Smith and Wesson is a strong buy. It's only got 15% debt. It's got a quick ratio of over one. It's got interest coverage of 46. It's highly profitable. It's a great company. Thanks for that suggestion, Jake Beverly. Uh, from Twitter, Luke, uh, who you can follow on Twitter at Thinly Spread, suggested Cameco. Cameco is a uranium miner out of Canada. Uh, actually much larger than what I had uh, realized, $5.4 billion, moderate buy on tip ranks, uh, generally good. You'll see the quick ratio um, over here is three. That's uh, quite impressive. You know, So uh, this is a company not making a lot of profit, but it's doing okay. Uh, and it's in uranium, uh, which uh, is attractive right now. But there's a better one coming up uh, in just a second. So I'm going to stick with that one. And we had a few people who suggested energy, tra energy transfer, uh, Bulldogs number one, Pekka Lethikowski and Robert Burke all uh, drew my attention to uh, energy transfer. Nice stock, this one. Uh, this one looks particularly good too. Tip Rank says it's a strong buy. Um, interest coverage of uh, more than three. Uh, mostly profitable for the most part. The return on equity is slightly negative, but it's not, not too bad. This, this is a really, really good uh, suggestion. So thanks for that one as well, guys. And um, then there's a few that I'm going to kind of skip over here until I get to the next one, Suncor. Suncor was actually suggested by quite a few people. It's uh, Alexia from Russia and Turban Beats and Wesley Wang, uh, Huang, sorry, and uh, Ater9700 all suggested Suncor. Suncor is uh, a really interesting energy um, stock for me. It's rated strong buy by tip ranks. Um, the company itself is, um, going quite strong, it's cheap with a PE of only eight. Um, if I scroll across a little bit on uh, Suncor, uh, it gets a little bit uh, into the negatives on, on uh, the ROI, ROA, ROE, et cetera. Um, but Suncor definitely is an interesting energy stock. For the people who've been following me, you obviously know I have quite a large energy portfolio. I have uh, a big chunk of Occidental. I, I have um, Pembima pipelines, I have Enbridge, I have a position in Total. So I'm not really keen to pick up more energy because I don't want to have my portfolio completely sort of concentrated or weighted towards energy, except for this one, Luke from at Thinly Spread on Twitter. Energy Fuels Inc. Ticker symbol U, 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 U. Yes, he's trying to tell us something, you and you and you and you. Energy, once again, uranium, trading at three bucks, about 52 week high of $3.50. Strong buy rated by tip ranks. Uh, you know, all the numbers here look pretty good. Um, all the way through, right at the end, uh, there's a bit of a drop off in terms of um, the return on equity assets and, and uh, investment. But overall, this is looking really, really good. 
Um, if, if I go back to the top just for a second, so you can look at the debt. Um, so the debt uh, ratio, the debt change and quick ratio, as I go through this particular stock here, uh, all pretty strong, very, very good. So uh, I like that one, Luke from uh, Thinly Spread. So thanks for suggesting that one. And there are a couple I'm going to skip over again. And the next one is Qdel, Qdel Corporation, which was suggested to me by the Babylonian Benedict. It's a healthcare stock. So uh, just so that you know, I just exited my position on Pfizer today. So uh, I have a, a, a hole in my portfolio in terms of healthcare. So I might pick up some uh, Qdel stock. And there's a number of very compelling reasons to invest in this. This is a large company. The stock is trading at around $200. It's got a 52-week high of about $300. It's an almost $9 billion company. It's rated a moderate buy on tip ranks. Um, it pays a very big fat dividend as well. Um, I'm going to uh, just look at this one. Just let me see if I can, uh, did I capture the dividends on this page? Uh, where am I here? No, this one, uh, I didn't capture the dividend. Maybe it doesn't have a dividend. I, I can't recall there are too many stocks, but really solid performance. Look at this, it's all green all the way through. Um, the quick ratio, that's okay. Um, and interest coverage of 2.24. Um, nice, nice uh, uh, equity investment here in healthcare. So I'm gonna certainly take a, a closer look at that one. By the way, if I say I'm probably gonna open a position in these like Smith and Wesson and U, 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 one, two, three, four U's, and uh, Cadell Corporation. I will share this information with you as I go. A couple of miners, Kinross and Kirkland Lake, uh, were suggested by Pekka Lethikowski. Uh, these are both mining companies. Uh, I like them both, Pekka, so thanks for suggesting them. I might take a whirl on uh, Kinross Gold. Uh, I like the uh, fundamentals sort of all the way through, lots of green over here. So. Of the two, Kinross looks to me a better buy than Kirkland Lake. I haven't made a decision yet, but I don't really have much in materials, especially metals and mining, so I'd probably go that route. Uh, Faraz Azar recommended Iron Mountain, which is a REIT, currently trading at $29 with a 52-week high of $34. Uh, that's a nice one as well. Uh, so I, I took a look at that one, Iron Mountain. Uh, they have a lot of debt, but then they have an interest uh, coverage race, ratio of 1.6, so they shouldn't have any difficulty paying that debt. And it's not very uh, unusual for REITs to have a, uh, a very high debt load because um, it's very frequently fixed assets, property, etc. A very profitable company. This one is the one that pays a big fat dividend of 8.45%. So uh, thanks for that recommendation for us. I'm going to certainly take a look at that one. A couple of people, Tom Damon and uh, Lee Stephen, uh, said I should take a look at some SPACs. I highlighted it here in yellow because I started looking at them and I thought, you know what, I'm not going to go into this the um, this category right now, so I'm going to kind of leave that over a little bit and maybe uh, look at them next time around. And the last one I want to share with you here is Intel. A few people suggested Intel, Helen Chan, Pulverizer A, Francisco AS, and Pekka Lithowski again, Lithowski again, sorry. Obviously, it's a technology stock. I have a gap in my portfolio for a technology stock. Uh, Intel has a PE of just uh, under 10. It's a $207 billion company. It actually pays a dividend of 2.6%, which is reasonably handsome. Uh, strong, good numbers all the way through. This is uh, a good potential investment for me. So guys, uh, in this part of the video, I'm gonna wrap it up here and I'm gonna tell you, I'm probably gonna pick up uh, some technology, uh, one REIT, um, maybe uh, one of these gold miners, probably Kinross, some Cadell in terms of healthcare, and I might look at uh, jumping back into Pfizer because I sold it for profit. I have no risk of a, a wash sale. I'm going to look at uh, investing into some uranium. Thank you, Luke, for that. And uh, Smith and Wesson as a uh, consumer discretionary. Uh, so um, that's kind of where my head's at right now, and I'll share some of these with you uh, as I go and uh, as I make an investment. All right, in this last section, I did uh, share with you that I was going to um, tell you about my Occidental trades. I actually traded some Occidental, which um, is not something I do uh, very easily, but uh, I did in this particular instance. Um, but don't worry, I didn't exit the position. You can still call me Mr. Oxy if you'd like. I'll tell you what happened. Uh, usually when I get into a um, very profitable situation on uh, a particular equity, um, so, for example, just a few minutes ago, I said that I exited my Pfizer position today. 
So Pfizer, of course, had been on a nice uh, big run. Uh, I plugged in a 10% trailing stop. Uh, the stock pulled back 10% and I exited that position on Pfizer. Uh, I did the same with Occidental's warrant. So um, for those of you who are not too familiar, this is just a reminder, but the warrants basically um, give you the right to purchase. You don't have to, in other words, not, a, not an obligation, but it gives you the right to purchase Occidental uh, common stock in the future for, for about the next six and a half years at $22. Now, um, with uh, Occidental warrants, uh, I was also up, uh, I think, in the high teens, close to 20%. Um, and uh, what I did there is I plugged in a 10% trailing stop. Basically, uh, the, the, um, the, 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 the strategy for me is that if I am sitting on a large gain and I plug in a trailing stop, remember the trailing stop trails the stock all the way up, uh, but that doesn't execute a trade unless the stock pulls back. So in the case of uh, Occidental's warrants, I put in a 10% trading stop. I actually didn't expect it to trigger um, a sale and execute, but um, you know what? Uh, sometimes they pull back 10% and it executes the, uh, the trade and uh, you know it takes some profit. No one's ever gone broke taking a profit. Uh, so what I want to do though, is I want to just explain to you what I did. So firstly, as I just said, Occidental uh, warrants give you the right to purchase Occidental common shares in the future for $22. So at the time Occidental uh, distributed the warrants, I had about 2,800 or something Occidental shares. So I got about 351 warrants. Remember they were giving you one Occidental warrant for every eight shares that you have. So whatever 351 is times eight, that's how many shares I had. So just under 3,000 shares. I think it was about 2,812 from memory. Anyway, um, my trading stock executed a sell order on my Occidental warrants and I sold them at about $7 per share uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, and that obviously is a um, sale value of around 2,400 bucks. So this is the actual trade that I highlighted here for you so that you can actually just see what it is that I'm referring to and what I'm talking about. Uh, you can see that the, um, the sale executed in, in uh, a variety of different tra tranches. Um, there's not enough uh, liquidity on uh, or volume in terms of the warrants uh, for it to just execute as one sale, but I sold 351.4059 Occidental warrants uh, and generated income of about $2,400, as I just mentioned above, which is about $7 per share. Now, remember, the thing is, the warrants give you the right to purchase Occidental in the future for $22 per share. So what I did was I took the $2,400, which was generated um, from the sale, which is cash. And I said, you know what? I'll just buy myself 351 shares of Occidental because Occidental was actually trading at less than $20 per share. So effectively what I did was I exercised my warrants, which raised 2,400 bucks. And I purchased Oxy at just under $20 per share, uh, which is a $7,000 investment, less the $2,400 that I generated from the sales of the warrants. Uh, and I'm not going into any detail here whatsoever on the tax event that I've created when I exercised the warrants or sold the stock. I'm only talking about the actual nuts and bolts of the transaction. So I purchased 3,500 Occidental shares at about $20. So let's call that $7,000. But the warrants generated $2,400 for me. So if I deduct the cost of the warrants, because obviously I didn't pay for the warrants, they were distributed to me. They were given to me similar to dividends. The actual cost of my purchase was about $4,600, and I bought 351 shares, which means my net cost per share, in theory, is about $13. Uh, the fact of the matter is this. The warrants entitled me to buy Occidental shares in the future for $22 per share. And what I did was I sold my warrants, but immediately purchased Occidental shares for just under $20. And you can see here's my filled order it says buy 350 shares of occidental at market and it uh, executed the trade for me at 19 dollars 88.6 cents so uh, just under 20 bucks per share so effectively i've just wa exercised my warrants early uh, instead of waiting for occidental to hit a price of like 30 40 50 dollars for the warrants to be in the money before i exited the position so guys, there you have it. That's a wrap. So uh, three things. I'm going to uh, create memberships on the channel, but you don't have to join the memberships. 
is not required. Um, but I will add a whole variety of different things that you will just get for free, including research and things like that if you do become a member. Uh, a quick review of my equity showed you some of the things that I'll be buying. And uh, much like I just shared this Occidental transaction with you, I'll share information with you as I execute some of those trades. And um, this is my Oxy trade uh, for the week, basically. So this is where I'm at. And now I basically just own even more Occidental shares or Occidental common. And I'll just uh, slowly wait for Occidental to uh, go up in value and to uh, make us all a little bit wealthier than what we are today. So guys, that is the, uh, the wrap for this particular video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for spending time with me. Remember to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Stay safe, take care, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.